We can do so many things with these phones nowadays, but what about these 360 cameras? Is it any good for 3D modeling? Hello boys and girls, I'm Oli Huttunen and this time I decided to dive in some trendy neural radiance field. It's about technology that revolutionized three-dimensional scanning and the creation of the 3D models. Neural Radiance Field, aka NERF, is a step forward from a typical photochrometry modeling where you try to make polygon surfaces from a bunch of photos. This new method harnesses the AI to make some calculations of the environment recorded by the camera and produces kind of a volume model from it that we can then rotate and explore inside the three-dimensional space. It certainly sounds confusing, but when you decide to start researching the topic, you will notice that it opens up completely new possibilities. Right now, the way I see it, there are only two ways to train and create these NERF models by yourself. One is somewhat complicated and challenging route that requires you to able to install Python programs and run several terminal commands. And the other is considerably more user-friendly cloud surface called Luma AI. Luma AI offers an easy to use app that you can download to your phone and start creating NERF models through it. You just choose a good object that you want to model and then just scan it, basically videoing it from all sides by moving around it in loops. Very simple. After shooting, the video is sent to Luma AI's cloud for processing and after about 30 minutes you can rotate the model freely and look at it from different angles. With Luma AI service, you are able to create new camera movements inside your scanned environment and render quite compelling retakes without returning to actual shooting location. Compared to photochrometry method, Neural Radiance Field is able to show reflections and transparent objects which otherwise have been difficult to present in photo modeling until now. Shooting objects with your phone is one thing, but what you really should be thinking is that can these NERF models also be trained with other cameras as well? And the answer is yes. If you go to your computer and log into your Luma AI account, you can upload all kinds of materials through web browser. And your scanning doesn't need to be only a video, you can also feed still photos to Luma. If you have multiple takes of your subject, you just package them into a single zip file and send that for processing. But here's where the things get interesting. When you go through the instructions on Luma's website, you will find a description there which tells you that you can also do nerve scanning with a 360 camera. Luma AI understands large shots taken with a double fisheye lenses and it also supports the so-called equirectangular image format, which is a typical overall image produced by 360 cameras. Compared to shooting with a phone or a regular DSLR camera, the 360 camera sees much wider areas. And since this type of camera is often used with a selfie stick, it's much easier for you to reach up high or lower the camera to suitable low angle to capture your subject from all sides. I am using an Insta360 camera where the stabilization is very good and the horizon lock feature keeps the image leveled no matter which way the camera itself is rotated. These features are the most important when you want to scan NERF models with 360 camera. Because scanning is based on circular motion around the object, shooting with the 360 camera, you don't have to worry about whether the subject stays in the center of the picture. 
In post-processing, we can easily rotate the video image so that the target is definitely visible during all rounds. With the Insta360 Studio application, you can easily edit the shots and, for example, track the object from the video to keep the subjects in the center of the image. After you've finished, you just render this out as a normal HD video and upload it into Luma service. Since the 360 camera can see everywhere, you will inevitably also be included in the picture, especially if a complete equirectangular image is used. However, this is not a problem, because since you are constantly moving in the relation of the background, Luma AI removes you from the picture, and only all things that stay in place remains in the final model. Therefore, possible shadows that are created when you shoot in the sunny weather and temporarily are casted over your subject when you go around them do not necessarily spoil the scan. Although this is not recommended, the best condition for shooting is overcast weather when there are few shadows visible and the subjects are evenly lit. Also, you should not always rely on the feature where you as a photographer will be erased from the model in the process. Those places where you were in the picture always leaves a special mark on the model. The removal produced of the lumpy and uneven distortion in the 3D model. That's why you should always try to stay behind the backside lens and try to point the front lens towards the object. So, when is it then a good situation to use full equirectangular images? Using a full 360 image becomes useful in the situations when you want to capture a tight spot where you can't go around any objects, such are for example narrow alleys or corridors. Then you should position yourself below the camera so that both lenses can see as much as possible in both directions. Or perhaps a good example is this kind of a scene which is scanned inside the car, where the selfie stick is used to pull the camera through the gapping of the car from the open side windows. The Nerf model built from this gives you an interesting opportunity to build camera movements that would be impossible to film inside the real car. Here are a few more notes about using Luma AI web service. One thing that is good to understand is that Neural Radiance field can also be translated into a surface model which is generated of 3D polygons. And when we look at and rotate the model in the browser, it is exactly that. A mesh model that can look very uneven and lumpy and you can see strange distortions in the details of objects. But what you should understand is that this model shown in the browser is only a low-poly version. Much more data is stored in the NERF model itself, and these deformations are smoothed out when you render a video out from the model. Radiance field looks and feels very different than the typical 3D mesh and it can produce almost the same kind of result as the original video from which the model was built. In these examples I have been interested mostly about the surrounding environment, but are these scanned models any good if we separate them out from the background and export them into another 3D program? There is a few surface model options where you can decide whether you want to download low, medium or high poly versions of your scannings. But back in the question, how does these scans actually look when they are opened in a 3D program? Well, of course they are not that accurate. You would probably get much more better results with the typical photogrammetry method. But they also have a lot to clean and you have to patch all kind of holes and smooth out uneven surfaces. 
But these NERF models are very broken and there are so many loose vertices that the model will fray immediately if you try to soften its surface with the sculpting tool. So these scans are not very useful in this format yet. We have to remember that this is very young technology after all, and it is certainly developing at the fast pace, like everything in the field of AI at the moment. In a way, the Nerf modeling challenges you to think about 3D from a little bit different perspective. Right now, probably the most interesting thing is the option where you can download the Nerf and opening it in the Unreal Engine as a volume model. This lays in front of you a whole bunch of new possibilities where you can, for example, light your environment in different ways and use Unreal's great camera features with depth of fields and all. It's very exciting. Even the real usage is still seeking its purpose a bit. This technology is very fascinating and it will be super interesting to see where these neural radiance fields will lead us in the future. With this, I at least found a new purpose for my 360 camera. I recommend you to try it also, it's really fun. I hope you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.